This is how Tommy really becomes the White Ranger and why it leads to the departures of Jason, Zack, and Trini. In the comics, the Shattered Grid arc concludes with the Power Rangers restoring reality, resetting the world to where it was before the invasion of Draken. As a result, most have lost the memories of the traumatic war against the Rogue Ranger. However, the restoration of the dimensions was not perfect, leaving cracks and fissures in space-time through which Morphin Grid energy leaks out. They latch themselves to random individuals across the galaxy, granting them extraordinary strength and skills, much like a Power Ranger would receive. As some of these beings begin to use their abilities for their own personal gain, it draws the attention of the Blue Emissary, an interdimensional ambassador of the Morphin Grid whose form constantly shifts between all Blue Rangers across time. They appear before Jason Scott, the mighty Morphin Red Ranger, and unlock his memories of Shattered Grid. In doing so, Jason receives a vision of the future, a horde of powerful villains teaming up that threaten not just Earth, but everything. It helps him to decide to take on this secret mission, as the Blue Emissary is reluctant to involve Zordon in order to minimize the impact on the timeline. Chapter 2. Green Ranger No More At the same time, the Power Rangers grapple with the threat of Lord Zed, whose arrival and creation of the original Dark Rangers, as seen in the TV show, results in the waning of Tommy's Green Ranger powers. After one final battle, the Dragon Zord goes into stasis and Tommy's Morpher becomes dormant. The rest of the teens struggle to watch Tommy come to terms with his new reality of not being a ranger anymore, as they understand very well the sense of responsibility and purpose their powers give them. Eventually, Tommy decides to leave Angel Grove for his uncle's cabin in the woods at the end of the school year for a short time. He feels that he was tethered to the city only because he was a Power Ranger, and similarly the sole reason why he and Kimberly have a romantic connection. Because if he's not the Green Ranger, who is he, really? Chapter 3. Whatever It Takes Back in Angel Grove, Jason grapples with his returning memories as well as the pivotal mission from the Blue Emissary. He realizes that a new team of Rangers must be created to help deal with the new threat. Jason makes an ultimatum in exchange for his help the restoration of Tommy's powers. The Blue Emissary then replies that he has a potential solution, but warns Jason that it might have drastic consequences, even resulting in him not being the leader of the Power Rangers anymore. The Red Ranger stands by his convictions and agrees, stating, whatever it takes. At this confirmation, the Blue Emissary appears before Zordon and reveals to him the existence of an alternative path to restoring Tommy as a Power Ranger, beyond Ninjor. Chapter 4. The White Light Tommy's time away from Angel Grove has given him little to no breakthroughs about who he is or what he wants to do. Conversing with his uncle, Tommy asks to join him in Hong Kong, and while his uncle reluctantly agrees, he also makes Tommy promise to break the news to his friends and family, in person, first. But before he can do so, Tommy is teleported into a hidden chamber of the command center by Zordon and Alpha. There, they explain to him that while his time as the Green Ranger has come to an end, there remains a possibility to make him into a new Power Ranger. However, in order to do so, Tommy must go and retrieve a new energy source from a distant planet fraught with unknown challenges and dangers. He is initially hesitant, citing his failure as the now former Green Ranger, but Alpha and Zordon reiterate their trust and hope in him. Tommy then steps through the portal and finds himself on a jungle planet, amidst ruins of a bygone civilization. Citing what looks like a white tiger, Tommy resigns himself to following the animal, who leads him to a central temple that houses the white tiger power coin. Tommy approaches its dais for the prize, but is stopped by Saba, the Sword of the Light, Chapter 5. Discovery and Suspicion Meanwhile, back on Earth, Billy recruits Grace Sterling, who was the mighty Morphin Red Ranger in the 60s, to help him locate both Alpha and Zordon. More about Grace Sterling in other videos, check the comments and description for the links. The two tech geniuses are able to isolate Alpha's records and generate a map of everything the trusty robot interacted with before going dark, which leads them to the discovery of the hidden chamber. At the same time, Jason takes the opportunity to utilize the command center's computers to help him locate new Ranger candidates for the Blue Emissary's mission, but grows increasingly frustrated at the inability to make any progress. Suddenly, Zack and Trini confront the duo, suspecting them of having something to do with the disappearance of Zordon and Alpha. Jason starts to explain both the existence of the Blue Emissary and what happened during Shattered Grid, but instead asks Trini and Zack for their trust, which his friends reluctantly supply as Lord Zed's latest monster Nimrod attacks. During their battle, the Black and Yellow Rangers express their doubts about relying on their leader as he is keeping secrets from the team. A grown Nimrod then summons his minions, AC and DC. The trio is able to overwhelm the Thunder Megazord, and the Power Rangers retreat to fight another day. Chapter 6. Test of a True Ranger Tommy is glad to see Saba again, having met the Talking Sword when he was transported with Billy into Draken's alternate dimension, but this Saba clarifies that the two sabers are variants of each other. In this reality, Saba's only allegiance is to guarding the white light, and he threatens to end Tommy's life, should he choose to pursue it. The former ranger and the saber fight. All the while, Saba seeks to uncover the true reason why Tommy would want to be a power ranger again. The sword knows all about Tommy's past as the green ranger, how he was evil until he was redeemed, but is emphatic that the white light is meant for someone pure of action and noble of heart. 
Tasked to oversee what is the strongest weapon for the side of good, Saba fears that should its wielder fall to the dark side, it would spell disaster, as Draken demonstrated when he seized the white light and fused it with his Green Ranger powers. Since Draken is a version of Tommy Oliver, Saba has resolved to never let him gain control. With the saber unmoved, Tommy seems to have failed in his quest. Just then, a portal opens up, and Lord Zed steps through. The Emperor of Evil reveals his master plan of draining Tommy of his Green Ranger abilities. Having coveted the white light for centuries, he knew that Zordon would attempt to empower his favorite ranger, and thus, all he had to do was wait and follow Tommy. Seizing and corrupting Saba, Lord Zed shows Tommy his vision for the white light. Not for himself, but to instead give to Tommy to bend to his will, becoming a better version of Draken. The revelation horrifies Tommy, who immediately declares that he would die before letting either Zed or himself corrupt the light. Lord Zed seems to grant Tommy his wish, but as all hope seems lost, in a flash, Zed disappears, and in his place floats a restored Saba. The Saber explains that it was all a trial for those who would seek to claim the light, to find the one that would give their life to protect all life, alone, and without glory nor grandeur. Saba then bestows the white light onto Tommy, who takes them both and returns to the command center. There, as Tommy completes his transformation into the White Ranger, Zordon breaks the news. As the now wielder of the strongest weapon against evil, the White Light would hone Tommy's senses to become the newest leader of the Power Rangers. Tommy's thoughts are on Jason as he reluctantly accepts the responsibility. Chapter 7 The Decision That Would Change Everything Following their defeat at the hands of Nimrod and his minions, the Power Rangers regroup while their zords are repaired. Jason wants to try handling all three monsters by himself, but Kimberly chastises him for coming up with such a foolish idea. At the same time, Trini and Zack discuss the mystery of their leader and the Blue Emissary, leaning towards telling the rest of the team as soon as possible. The Herald of the Morphin Masters then appears to the duo, seeking to dissuade them. At this, Trini demands to also have their memories restored, if indeed their friend Jason is on an island of his own. The Blue Emissary is impressed by their devotion to Jason, but warns that it would change everything for them as well. Soon thereafter, Zordon and Alpha reappear to the Rangers and reintroduce Tommy as the White Ranger and the new leader of the team. Together as six once again, Tommy pilots the White Tiger Zord into battle against Nimrod and his Scarlet Sentinels, defeating them all as the combined Mega Tiger Zord, a new weapon in their arsenal against Lord Zed's increasingly dangerous monsters. During their post-victory visit to Ernie's Juice Bar, Tommy confides in Jason his unease with the way in which he became the leader of the Power Rangers. Jason comforts his friend and reassures Tommy that he is exactly where he needs to be. Because after all, it was Jason's decision to do whatever it takes that led to the change in the first place. As they all leave the juice bar, Zack and Trini meet with Jason and reveal that now they too remember everything. The trio then resolve to tackle the Blue Emissary's mission, together. Chapter 8 The Departure Their course set, Jason, Zack, and Trini leave Earth under the guise of a scuba trip and arrive on the Spectrum, a spaceship prepared by the Blue Emissary. The new team's first mission takes them to an alien planet where they meet Kira, an individual imbued with Morphin Grid energy. When her powers awakened, the resulting blast destroyed her home, along with her family. Now her village has branded her a witch, and the rangers arrive to a tense confrontation. Trini is able to make a personal connection with a frightened and angry Kira, calming her, and is able to defuse the situation by taking Kira away with them. Their second mission lands them on an icy world, where an empowered cat-like alien protecting a child attacks the rangers. Kira is able to leap into action and helps subdue the enraged beast. Both Kira and this space cat, named Yale, will play important roles in the future. Shortly thereafter, the Blue Emissary reveals just how many empowered beings the newly assembled team is tasked with finding. The sheer number makes Jason realize that he cannot lead this mission and be a defender of Earth at the same time. As Tommy has been solidified as the new leader of the team, the trio decide to devote their full time to the cause. Using the peace conference in Switzerland as a cover, Jason, Zack, and Trini resign their positions as Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. They then help retrieve the Sword of Light, which allows them to transfer their powers to the Stone Canyon trio of Rocky, Adam, and Aisha. As the now former rangers prepare to depart Earth, Tommy pulls Jason aside, expressing his desire for the three to stay. There is a sense of betrayal felt by the White Ranger, who worked hard to return as a member of the team, only to have half of them walk away. Jason tries to reassure his friend that he is only leaving because he felt the rangers were in good hands, but the two part on uncertain terms. Eventually, the three former Power Rangers embark on their galactic journey, and the Blue Emissary presents them with a new set of ancient, storied morphers. With a power set based on the alchemical properties of earth, fire, air, and water, they, along with Kira, become the new Omega Rangers. And so, this is how the comics expand on the TV show's lore and create more context around how Tommy really became the White Ranger. Do you think Jason made the right call to leave? This video is a condensed version of many chapters of the comics and omits quite a few details about other subplots that occur at the same time. To get the whole story, read the comics for yourself. The links are available in the comments or description. For more Power Rangers lore and beyond, subscribe and stay tuned to Morphin Shorts.